All right, quick video. I had a uh, a uh, very well known guy that's out there in the uh, in the competition scene. I'm not going to name any names, but he 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 named a key and circuit a unique name I'd never heard before. He said he called it an an, an igniter circuit and a, a relay igniter circuit. I was like, I ain't never heard it called that before. That's pretty unique. <laughs> but right here, what I have is my two notebooks of knowledge for my last 10 years. Now, this isn't all of my diagrams I've drew, but this is all the diagrams I... I will probably be honest with you. Half of these diagrams were probably drew on the, on the old can, as they say. <laughs> I'm going to keep it 100, as they say, would you? Because, uh, hey man, some of the most genius ideas, some of the most amazing inventions of the world were thought of on the porcelain throne. You think I'm lying, look it up. So over the years, you can see how thick this is. We got one RF notebook, RF parts notebook in here, but every single paper is diagrams, and this this notebook has been full. What I plan on doing is putting them in plastic, putting them in the binder, and maybe making some YouTube videos and sharing them with everybody. And then this one right here is, I think it's full too. I've been meaning to go buy another one. Yeah, it's full. Once it gets to that point, this has been full for a while. Now this one is slap full. There is no books in this one. This one's just flat out slap full of all. It's, it's, it's crazy how these things add up. It really is. But anyway, you know, I need to go buy me another one of these bad. Bad. This one was actually... My parents uh, work, has worked for Little Debbie Snack Cakes for a long time. Let me get on, man. I'm a dang talker. But, uh... I told them I'd make them a quick, 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 quick diagram just to explain a keying circuit. What we call a keying circuit. Another name for it is an RF sensing circuit. Okay. Or what it really is, is a DC regulating circuit and a RF switch. A switch via RF. That's what it technically is. And I'm going to explain that to you. Coming off from the most simple part, we use relays, which are mechanical switches, which uses a magnetic force to pull an armature. So, it's this right here is a double pole, double throw switch. It's two single pole, double throw switches. Just look at it, split it in half. This is a single pole, double throw. This is a single pole, double throw. This ain't a, a video on relays. I've got another video on that if you ever want to take a look at it. But here's your hot bus, all right? We bring a wire up to an on and off switch, and then that switch goes to the coil of the relay. This right here is just a snubber diode. It protects the relay's coil over a long period of time. It also pre protects the key and circuit, too. So, but anyway, this is the positive side of the relay, all right? So as soon as you flip the on switch, this relay has positive voltage going to it. But the connection is not yet made because it needs a negative. Now, if we just had a wire right here on the negative part going to ground, as soon as you flip this switch, the relay, psh, the common pins will then touch the normally open pins. Then we turn the switch off, psh, the common pins will then be touching the normally closed pins. Okay? But, as it sits, we need a way to turn this relay on so we can get our RF to the uh, amplifier part of, of the circuit. All right, so there are numerous, and I mean absolutely numerous ways to do an RF sensing circuit, keying circuit. This right here is about the most easiest way that works very well and is actually very durable. As long as you're not keying a heck of a lot of power into it, Normally, when you get on a bigger amplifier, you're going to be driving very hard. You'll, you'll, you'll beef up the actual transistor itself that you're using. 
So the way we do this, we're using this transistor right here, which is a NPN transistor. And we just need this transistor to turn on to give this relay a ground. And here's the flow that it's going to take. The emitter of this transistor is grounded, okay? Straight to the board, grounded to your ground plane. We want this transistor to turn on so that this ground, and I'm just giving you this in conventional, easy ways of understanding, so that this ground flows this direction through the transistor, this direction to the relay, giving this relay, connecting this ground plane to the negative part of the coil of this relay. That's what we want to do. So how do we do that? First off, this transistor needs at least 0 0.7 volts to turn on. I ain't going to talk about forward bias, reverse bias, or anything like that. What, son? What? You see that mess you made earlier? All right. All right, and we need to shampoo this floor tomorrow, by the way. I'm just reminding you. <laughs> that little smart little joker right there made an absolute mess in here today. Knocked over a two-liter bottle. I ain't even going to get into it. But this floor is being shampooed tomorrow, which I've been meaning to do it anyway. But goodness gracious, look at all these spots. <laughs> look at him. He ain't doing nothing wrong, did he? Back to what I was talking about. Actually, I guess I should be thinking. I've been needing to uh, clean this floor anyway, but God dang it. These dogs are beautiful at watching when those humans make mistakes and leave drinks and stuff close by or food because they're going to go straight to it and knock that junk over. All right. Here's the way we do this. Uh, this is your input connector, your input SO239, your RF coming into the amp, okay? This is a very small capacitor. 10 to 15 picofarad is perfect size. Look at it this way. All we're doing is taking a very tiny sample of the RF that's coming in just so we can get that RF voltage, the, the, the AC voltage, the 27 million times a second. Is it 27 million or 27,000? 27 million, I believe it is. 20, 27 million times a second. It might be 1,000. My brain ain't working too well tonight. I need to go to bed. But it's a lot of times. <laughs> so we're taking that voltage from that 27, 28 megahertz, whatever, wherever you're on. And for this particular transistor, it's going to work best if we regulate that voltage and first convert it over to a pulsating DC. So we need to convert it from AC to DC. How do we do that? Through this diode. All right, this is a small signal glass diode. A 4148. Or 914 will work perfect as well, about the same deal. Small glass diode, okay? A small signal diode. The RF coming in is going to do this right here. Half of that signal, half of that, because an AC signal is a sine wave. It goes plus negative, plus negative. Half of that signal is going to be shunt to ground, okay? Half of that signal is going to be shunt to ground. So it's going to turn to this, to this, all right? It's no longer going to be going, let me do this so you can really understand, all right? It's going to turn to this, to this. It's no longer going to be going negative anymore. It's going to be pulsating positive like that, okay? Next, to keep things kosher, we're going to smooth it out with a smoothing capacitor. This capacitor is going to help to keep this relay latched also. Because, think about it, if this thing's going plus negative, plus negative, that relay's going to chatter. So we want to give it to where this relay's got a constant DC voltage, because this particular re relay is a DC voltage. Could you use an AC relay? Of course. I got some... uh 
neat RF keying circuits that use AS, AC relays, but there's really no need in it. It's just better, easier to do it this way. That's why we do it this way, okay? So the RF's going to come in, take a small sample. This is a coupling capacitor, RF sensing capacitor. Take a small sample, shunt half of it to ground. All we're doing here is rectifying the AC voltage, which is the RF AC voltage, and smoothing it out a little bit. And guess what? We don't even have to use a resistor with a circuit, which is pretty amazing. If we were using a PNP resist, a transistor, like a Texas Star, you see Texas Star, you, with that particular design, it's best to use a little bit of resistance to knock it down a little bit just because of the circuit. But with this particular circuit, we don't even have to use a resistor just because of how everything is laid out. The voltage is at a safe operating voltage to turn this transistor on. And you can actually do this and hook up your meter if you have a high dollar meter that's not sensitive to RF and see the DC voltage of this turned on. So, this transistor is now forward biased. And the second that this transistor becomes forward biased, current is then able to flow like this right here. Remember, electrons non-conventionally flow from negative to positive. But we're going to look at this as a conventional, a non-conventional aspect. Electrons begin to flow. So I'm saying DC it is a circle. So the electrons flow, turning this relay on. So in another simple nutshell, this is a switch to give ourselves a positive voltage going to the relay. Here's our switch to give our relay a negative voltage to turn the relay on with the RF coming in. That's the switch. RF comes in through the capacitor since the capacitor is in series. Comes up this direction. Half of it gets shunted to ground. Using the capacitor up here. The AC is rectified. Turned into a pulsating DC voltage. Then smoothed out a good bit. And now since we have a DC voltage, it's enough to turn this transistor on and forward bias it. Flows through the base, turns the transistor on, gives the relay a ground. It's that simple, y'all. By this time, it shouldn't be that hard to make a keying circuit. And another really, really, really neat keying circuit, I think I'm going to make a video on here soon, is using an optocoupler. And I'm going to be honest with you, that circuit's easier to use than this. And it takes less parts. And has its advantages of being isolated from your input. Because if you look at it like, well, I'm not going to get into that in this one. Let's keep this one simple. I got to go get in the shower. And then I got to get prepared to move everything out of here so we can shampoo these carpets. It's been a long time coming, but... What he did today really helped me put my butt in motion. The old gatekeeper, just for a quick video, my buddy, he knows who he is. Uh, I told him I'd make him a quick video showing him a key and circuit, how it works and everything. And I'm sure he'll have a little bit better understanding. And uh, I thought I'd upload it and see if anybody else can get any use of it, out of it. Old gatekeeper right here around the northeast end of the big GA, baby. 73. Bye-bye.